Welcome to Neuro Movement Revolution with Anat Benyel, where you will discover breakthrough possibilities for your life through the brain's power to change. We're so happy that you can join us in making the impossible possible. Okay, so now episode 21 of our Neuro Movement Revolution podcast. The topic for this is how to bring the nine essentials into your daily life. So I think we may have... Start with that question. We, we oh, I will start with the question that we got. Um, Read the whole thing. I will. Hang on. We have two. We have two. Um, so a, a question from Car Clara And let's just make Ireland. it clear. These are, these are questions that have been emailed to us before the podcast. And and uh, we we when we send you out a, an emailer about the podcast and invite you to um, a, a, ask questions to email questions, uh, please do. You know because especially with Michael Merzenich, we are not going to be able to. Do um, it. Uh, we don't know yet. Maybe live. Maybe not. No, no, it's not live. It's we not can't live. do it. Okay, we in that case, we definitely need questions. We, will, in we don't need. I mean, Mike and I can talk for ten hours and be fine. <laughs> But we would love to include you in our conversation. So, and Mike Merzenich is, of course, the renowned so-called father of the, you know, the science of neuroplasticity. Uh, so, so, and we love getting questions, and we're getting better and, and at making time to answer them. Yes, we, we should are. acknowledge our own improvement. Yes, and that. <laughs> <laughs> so, a question from Clara in Ireland, and uh, she says she's a pediatric PT. She found ABM online about two years ago, and even just getting what info I can find online and in your books, it's completely transforming how I practice and the results I get. So the first thing I must say is thank you for the work you do and thank you for this podcast. It's amazing. I'm currently saving to do the practitioner training in 2021. In the meantime, can I ask about spinal muscular atrophy? I've moved to a new service recently and have never treated children with this condition. I have two children on my caseload with this who seem to be very advanced in their conditions, though I haven't seen either one yet. They haven't had one-to-one -one intervention as, as, uh, and as such, so I want to balance making sure I do everything I can while not giving anyone false hope of improvements. Have you any experience with SMA, spinal muscular atrophy, and what results have you gotten? Well, thank you for your question. Clara. Clara, thank you, thank you for your question. The I have worked definitely with the muscular atrophy and the, and with children and with some magnificent results. A, very important for me to say we the work did not cure the illness. It's not Again, it's like all other degenerative, uh, degenerative diseases. So what do we do? So I'll tell you very briefly. The, one of the cases was she was five years old. She already was not able to uh, roll over or to sit herself up. So that means she could do some of that. And by the time she was five, she couldn't. And just to tell you what's possible with this girl, she got, went all the way to coming pretty quickly back to rolling and then to sitting and then learned to stand and was able to stand, you know, not like other children. The posture of those children is different. They, they walk more like they kind of, you know, like people had the pole, you know, they, they, they have to use shifting the weight of the torso because the back doesn't work as strong, but they are able to be up, stand up and move forward, use their hands. Much Some more. of them. Some of them. I mean, yeah. but I'm talking, well. It, we, we've worked with kids with spinal muscular atrophy who have not managed to get to stand. No, to standing, but, but the one that, that the mother just graduated the training, he's become much stronger and uses his arms and the back yeah. is stronger and he feels stronger and his voice is stronger. So, no, not everybody gets to standing. This girl could because there's nothing I can do about the muscular atrophy. We interact through the body, the muscles, the movement, basically, to communicate with the brain. Because I can take myself and take a week or a month or a year and just do daily work on myself 
and get myself in a month, certainly within a year, to do things I could never do in my life that maybe I wanted to do. Because I am now growing my brain in a certain context to learn specific things. That's what brains do. The brain of the muscular atrophy child is, is not, is fine, right? It's a healthy brain. It's the communication between the brain and the muscles that is interrupting and, the, and you know, and the biochemistry, all that stuff. So terribly important to understand. You want to put the child, whatever you start doing with the child, that in a, in a position and in a condition that is really, really easy for them to do. Because, if, because they are weak. So if you ask the child to pick up their hand and their arm up in the air and their lower back, you do it yourself. If you pick up your arm to the air, your pelvis, if you're doing it in a, in a way that it's supposed to be happen, your pelvis rolls forward, your lower back arches, your back muscles all of, you know, get activated. You put, well, if you're sitting, you weight is shifting to your feet. You, your, your, your brain is getting ready maybe to continue and stand up. But if your back is not working and everything is just slumped like jello and you want to pick up the arm, this thing is so heavy. It's too heavy. And the child can't pick it up. They try to do it. They have the idea of what it means. They can't do it. Two times the brain inhibits it. It's failure. So ideally, if you could talk to those, take these children into a salt water pool, put something where they float and work with them in water, it'd probably be the best way to start working because you reduce the gravitational pull. You probably are not going to work with kids in the swimming pool. I'm not working with kids in the pool. So I put them lying down or I put them first lying on their side and I'm going to get the back to move a little bit because it's really easy to roll a little forward and a little backward the torso when you lie on your side. But guess what? When you move your torso forward, look what my shoulder does. My arm is moving a little forward, even though I didn't even try to move my arm forward. You can put the arm on a roller, you know, just a wooden or a plastic roller, and, and you move the back of the child forward, the roller will roll forward. You can put five rollers al along the arm in the first times you ask the child to move the arm forward. So the weight of the arm, and you know, it's like on a wheel. It makes it a lot easier to move. And once you start doing that, you just make it really easy because I think probably people that try to get those kids to move, try to make them do things they can't do, but they can't do it because they can't do them. I mean, they, they don't have the strength and they won't get the strength by failing. You, us, when we go to the gym, we can already move. So we start where we are and if we're not totally crazy, we don't take weights that are too heavy. And by the way, one of the most powerful ways to increase muscular power is to, to practice with just a little bit more than you already can do. And then just a little bit more than you're already doing. And that way, within a month and a half, two months, you can come to levels that if you just try to do heavy weights from the beginning, you'd never attain. So yes, they can improve. Think their brain is ready to learn. It just needs conditions where it can move. It can move, that it's easy enough to move. And be creative. Okay, we have a question here from Anne Cowan. Hi, Anne. A six and a half year old child is doing so well thanks to ABM. Thank you. But the teacher at school wants him to wheel his own wheelchair. He can, but he gets exhausted by the end of the day. Would it not be better if he only did what comes easy? He can crawl, go up steps, and can't wait to walk, hence the wheelchair. Finn's mother has told them, please push him. What is right? Well, first of all, I want to, because it's about, I want to connect it to the essentials. Mm -hmm. So the essentials in the, just the answer that I get is you, you, first of all, it's before that you connect with the child. You know that the child has to do what they're going to do. They have to learn. It's not us making them, making them, making them, right? So there's a benevolence and an enlightenment to the approach. And then what you do is, you, you know, you slow down, you reduce the intensity. Remember subtlety. You slow down. You don't, we'll get, get in a minute for the exhaustion. 
you get the child to feel what they do. You don't tell them feel, 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 but you say, oh my God. Oh, look it. And you can put like if you the arm starts rolling easy forward, you can put your hand where it bangs gently against you. You say, oh, you're tapping on me. You're tapping on me. That's the awareness. You know, that's amplification. Inside you get delighted with it. That's enthusiasm. You do variations. And now I'm going to the you're, the teachers are beyond wrong. They're just plain wrong. They're well meaning, but they're totally wrong. <laughs> it goes straight with the previous question. The 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 child is by the way, the we we movement is pleasurable when it's done and it's done easily it's we are built to move it's supposed to feel good so it's not about you know spoiling the child or doing to do too much toward the child but every time you exhaust system you aggress it it has to recover it has to recover metabolically it has to regain its strength it has to regain its its in, inclination to do things exhaustion Look it, we need to recover from exhaustion. And when the child already has muscular uh, uh, atrophy, they're already exhausted all the time. They, they, they're weak. And when the child has difficulty moving, and it sounds like Finn is doing fantastically well, it takes a lot more work for them to do what for us is nothing. Because they're, they, it's, it's just a lot more. It's even if not just muscular, the brain has to work, the brain has to be more, work at a higher level to give an outcome despite the limitations, whatever they may be, the interruptions. So let him crawl, crawl, crawl. If you went now, everybody listening, go on the floor and crawl on all fours and crawl, you know, unilaterally a few movements and then a few movements cross laterally, crawl on your belly, crawl backwards, crawl forwards, close one eye when you crawl, cross the other eye when you crawl, get up and walk and feel how much better you're gonna stand and walk. Just from five minutes of doing variations of crawling because you're gonna reboot your brain and give it information that when you pop on your feet, you're gonna do better. I promise you that, especially if you slow down and you pay attention and blah, 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 the whole essentials. The child, if it, he loves to move and crawl, oh, for, please let him crawl. <laughs> you know, it's such a gift. And if he goes upstairs, let him go upstairs. Willing the wheelchair is not what we are looking to practice him to do. No, he can do it for a few minutes or two, just short distances inside the wherever. If he has to go to the three feet, let him crawl the thing himself. But long distances, corridors, ridiculous. Tell the teachers that I love them, but to stop. They have to read my book and to cut it out. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's time. Yeah. What else are we going to yeah, do? Yeah. We're going to exactly. wait till we ruin all the kids. Yeah, go uh, ahead. We have a couple more questions, but I just want to bring Kathy back in because um, it relates to what you said about having the child in water. So I'm discovering my child is exploring new moves in the bathtub. Lessons on side and back with ABM practitioners seem like the learning is showing up with the support of the water. Moving one leg at a time and lifting hips, none of this is currently available outside of the tub. Love this new explanation. Good, Kathy. Yeah, of course. Of course, it's all the same. It just, we have to be creative and we have to change what we trust to work. We tend to trust forcing and basically you know forcing sometimes viral you know it's just it's different it's a different way question from rami i don't know if you're still on the the line rami i have a three months old baby and he has uh -huh. hypotonia in both legs since she has not rolled over completely yet we do not do tummy time last at one month as i read your book so he stopped doing tummy time after reading the book but i feel that she's getting worse when i put her on her tummy now she was controlling her neck and looking around when we were doing tummy time when she was around two months old. Thank you. Okay, Rami, I hope, hope, hope you're still on the line. Not doing tummy time, you know me. I'm, I said, don't do that. On the other hand, if the child has a, a spasticity, basically, right? Well, hypotonia. Oh, lower tone? Oh, no, sorry, hypotonia. You're right. Yes, yeah, yeah, hypotonia. Yeah, yeah. 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 A, a, 
it doesn't matter, either one, by the way, would be the same case, but when she has spasticity in her legs, it inhibits the spontaneous random movements that little infants have, which is what gets them eventually to roll on their belly. She needs lessons. She really needs lessons. And my question is, and she might not need a lot of them, but but she, she needs lessons. Something is going on in the nervous system that, and it will get worse unless we get the brain to start differentiating and figuring itself out. So, so uh, I don't know if you're in the call. If you are, please uh, respond to, 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 what, to what I'm saying. Uh, and, and wherever you are, if you know, if you can, if you're not near a practitioner, if you can get on an airplane and go for a week for an, an intensive or get in a car and get some lessons, it can make all the difference in the trajectory of her life. Tummy time would not have made her move. You know, it's, it, she has to, the lack of movement is the reason that she's she's not developing and and the lack of movement is due to something that's going on that gets her to to be spastic so so and i don't know what the doctors say but three months old is young it is such a good time to catch it uh, and if you want to get more information or more advice uh, if we don't hear from you here I mean, uh, uh, you can, you know, get on the website and email us and we will communicate with you and try to support you in finding how and where to go to get uh, some intervention. Okay. A uh, couple of questions from Nedi Safar. She says, where can she go to uh, hear podcasts that she's missed? On the website. Yeah, if you go to our website, um, they're all archived. And there are different ways of consuming them because some people like to just listen. So there are places you can you can just like get get the, the audio. But if you go to our website, there's a, a link to the podcast, and it tells you how to get the archive of all the recordings. Yeah, through iTunes and through. through it's on. They're on YouTube, YouTube, and they're still on Facebook. They they reside on Facebook forever, I think. On our, yeah. On our so, Facebook but but page. they're organized on the on the website. And there are different ways to listen to them and to watch them. So, yeah. you know, it's forever. <laughs> and her question is, do you agree with the saying, sitting is the new smoking? Is it that bad for you? Well, you know, uh, who's, who's, who's Neddy. Neddy. Neddy, you know, it makes me laugh. And it's a cute question. It's a... It's like if you ask me whether I agree that we that all women are emotional or all men are filling the blank, uh, I, I I get stumped because immediately I see women that are and women that are emotional and the one woman that is emotional in the morning but not emotional in the evening. I mean, I have a highly differentiated system. <laughs> so sitting depends how you sit, depends how much you sit, depends what you do when you don't sit. So so let's if I want to expand. Movement is incredibly important, and variability in movement is important. And the way I introduce the essentials, you know, makes movement. If you do movements combined with the essentials, like with the awareness or with the reducing force, you know, even for five minutes, two times a day, or or when you go to the gym or something, you do some a little bit of that. Then, then movement is, you know, it's really the elixir of life i guess and and it's life it's what it is sitting and getting focused on a on a let's say on a computer screen and kind of forgetting yourself tends to slowly kind of degrade the brain also if you just watch tv or or you know and 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 gets habituated into not being active you know not being awake and alive and active so, but then you can also sit and do things in sitting. We have a program called the New Movement for the Busy Life. We used to call it Desk Trainer, uh, where there's like seven minute, five to seven minute movement lessons that are in a chair. <laughs> and, and you can sit in a chair and do movement and get the benefits, just like if you were standing or lying down. So move. And sit we have, and we have move. longer lessons than sitting too. We have a healthy dynamic sitting program as oh, yeah. part of the, the near movement for whole brain body fitness. Yeah, that's true. We have so 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 you get you know you get to sit and move and take little breaks and and um 
And, and it's a great way to introduce the essentials into your daily life, which is the yes. topic of this podcast. Yes. So, you know, you're sitting, you don't just sit. Yeah. And then there's nothing good about smoking. There's lots of good about sitting. Sitting is a position. Smoking is a different thing. So it's effective as a slogan to say, wake up. It's dangerous to just sit and sit and sit. But otherwise, I don't agree with it. <laughs> um, so uh, we have... Wasn't couple... there another written pre... pre oh, I think there was, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to honor that. I just, okay. Um, while you I'm looking for me. that, there's a <coughs> thank you from Rami for your answer about uh, the little three-month-old. And Gail Rivas says that was an awesome answer, awesome answer in relation to your comments about the child, the little boy in the wheelchair at school. And while I'm looking at this question, when uh, is... Rami, Rami, I want to know if you're going to take your kid into like some, some practitioner. No, he does. He said taking courses from ABM practitioner. Um, they live in Munich, but they're taking courses with an ABM practitioner. Oh, they are. oh okay. Oh, we, were in, we weren't in Munich. Where were we? We were, we were in Frankfurt. We were in Frankfurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we missed While you. I'm looking for this question, yeah. Kathleen Hansen says, when is your talk with Dr. Merzenich? You will get an announcement. Uh, actually, we do know. When is our talk? No, no, we are recording it. We'll, we'll, announce, we'll announce it. Promise. Uh, this was a question asked on a previous podcast, but not answered because we asked for additional information, which she sent. This is from Alia. Uh, my pediatrician wants me to sleep train because my son doesn't sleep well, but I'm not keen due to the stress this will put on his nervous system and fear he will regress in his learning due to this. In general, it's the leave them to cry, cry it out type of thing. Can you teach a child to learn to sleep better? Put them to bed and if they wake up just to make sure they are safe but not necessarily pick them up. Just in most cases, leave them to cry themselves back to sleep. They think that if I do this for a week or so, he will train himself to go back to sleep and after time, sleep in longer stretches. Well, I hear a couple of things. I hear like he, he wakes up a lot. And I don't know if that's the case because she's talking about longer stretches mm -hmm. and that he doesn't go to sleep if he's left yeah. alone. And I don't know how old the child is, which also is so important. Uh, I, I, you know, if you're willing to bring it to the next podcast, be on the podcast, because, you again, it varies. It varies on the condition of the child. And then it's how you go about doing it. So so, uh, so what we are basically saying is you don't want to traumatize your child. But there's a way in which, and I agree with you, I mean, trauma is not a, along with, <laughs> with attempted learning. Uh, however, there, there is also can be a habit for the child where, where they, you know, they, they don't know that they can be safe, not just attached to the parent or so on. So, and by the way, Randy Roberts, you know, this, those of you who have seen the five-day parent-child workshop, she, I, we send a lot of parents to coach with her uh, uh, because she, she really finds out specifically what happens and coaches the parents so that the parents do it in a way that the parents are not anxious and also the child is not anxious and it works well. And there isn't a lot of crying, a week of hours of crying. This is terrible. I don't, I don't, I don't believe I could do it. You know, so if you could, you, you, with my child, you know, and she, she was premature, my own daughter, and she wanted to be close to me and, you know, and it took her a while, but, but, uh, so if you say, Aliyah, if, it's Aliyah? Aliyah, if yeah. you send us more information next time, and if you're there so you can converse with us back and forth, it'll be helpful. Uh, one last question. How would you approach explaining to a 10-year-old autistic child not to enter his sister's space? For example, when she is trying to hit a ball at mini golf. <laughs> well, he doesn't he has to know what it means sister's space, right? I mean, whatever words you use. So so again, just go back to the, you know, the, the beginning of the uh, to to podcast number 20 and and a little bit here too, but you 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 don't you don't try to have him figure it out as he's already quote unquote failing as he's already misbehaving so to speak. Uh, um, uh, 
you you look for an opportunity to get him to feel I'm here, I'm there. Here, whatever happens. There, whatever happens. And let's say if he wants something, I don't know, it can be a toy, it can be food, it can be, you can start with something simple that involve, engages his interest. And you say, here, the toy won't happen here. Toy will happen here. So you take it away completely from the sister's conversation. And for a while, if you want to get the sister to have a nicer life, you make sure that he is a, she, she, I don't know, find a solution. Just one of the parents take her to golfing and he doesn't come along or he's uh, doing something uh, far enough away from the sister that he doesn't have the temptation to join her. Get him to be successful and get her to get what she needs and start working with creating. And then, you know, then you can say he wants something from you. I'm just giving you made up examples right now. I have no idea what's happening in real life for you. But it's like, let's say he wants something from you and he gets really close to you and he pulls on you or something. And you say, I'll give it to you, but you have to stand here. And he said to say, here you stand, I stand here. And if he stands there, even for a fraction of a second, you immediately give it to him so he's successful. You don't test him that he will stay there. You give it to him. And, and, and you work with him having the experience of the here versus somewhere else. And here this happens there. And then when that gets clear, you can talk to him before you go playing golf. And you say, you want to come with us when your sister hits the ball. She's here and you're going to be there. And try to give him something there that's interesting for him. The best I can do right now. Always an absolute joy to hear you just... <laughs> creating and <laughs> making things up on the spot around this work. It's just... Yeah. Well, because I so want to help the parents, yeah, of you know, I mean, the, of course, the children, the children are the center, but the parents, and I think parents, you underestimate how much you are part of your child's brain and how much with even small shifts, you can make a huge difference in the outcome, not in terms of guilt or burden, but in terms of, oh my God, I can do this. It's like you can drive a car. You can drive yourself in ways that will be useful to your child. Uh, there are two more questions. We're going to run over a little bit. Okay, because these were have, have been in the, the feed. So um, question from Elena uh, regarding her son on the spectrum. She said um, she remembered you uh, talking about kids on the spectrum having rigid ankles. Mm -hmm. Um, and she says that her son, even though he's walking and, and, and talking some, uh, when he walks, his toes are curled. What can she do? You can't do anything directly with the toes. I promise you that. <laughs> the toes curl, it has to do with the reflexes and the whatever the brain's doing. I won't go into that right now. But, you know, he moves, see if you can do certain things with him in movement where you employ the essentials. And think of movements that are down close to the ground, you know, rolling, this, that, reaching, variation, slowing down. I don't know how old the child is, so it's very six. hard. Oh, he's six. Yeah. So he can play. So, oh, so he, 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 not, he understands a lot, but doesn't even nod for yes or no. That's okay. Yeah. But, but, you know, you just... He needs more differentiation and more different organization actually in his back and the relationship between the back and the head. The toes can then, he will stand different. He won't feel like he needs to grab the ground. So, uh, and in this case, by the way, again, if you live anywhere that there is a practitioner and you're so inclined, having taken get to a few lessons and you're not, a, you know, if there was something happening with your, you know, with your child's, uh, I don't know, tummy, you take him to a tummy doctor, right? I mean, you, 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 you use the expertise of somebody else. And when you, we have parents sit in the lessons and when you see what's done, the practitioner can give you suggestions and you can, you can build something and make it easier on him and make it easier on you. But, but in the end, in the meanwhile, start to empl employing the essentials in a playful way around what he does 
and and perhaps get him to feel what his back is doing, his leg is doing, because the awareness of the child, the differentiation, the con connectivity, the mapping of the body and the brain, is uh, is uh, not sufficiently not sufficient and not sufficiently differentiated. So that's what we would be after. I hope that makes sense to you because I don't know how else what to say. Yeah. And one last question. This is from Veronica and relates to seizures. Mm. She said, what kind of stimulation would you recommend to do at home after a child has had a bad period of seizures and seems to have lost some skills? How can you help his brain to awake again? And she came I, I, back to yeah, it slowly. Yeah, let, let me just yeah. say it very quickly. Not by trying to make him do what you feel he lost, the regression. It's very common there's regression after seizures. What you do is wherever they are, whatever they're inclined or easy, easily available for them to do, there you interact with a child and have them feel themselves. Move, so they move with attention to the feeling of self and s slowing them down and, and, and uh, creating variations around where they're at will pop the brain up faster than anything else because it's not of what the, the person is doing that indicates uh, uh, you know that will make the brain work it's the utilization of the essentials bring the brain brain back home to himself it's upgrades the quality of its general organization and then the child will be much more likely to b get back what they quote unquote lost i think we have to stop don't we you do think? yes Thank you again yeah, for thank you, uh, being yes. with us and asking such great questions and being so interactive with us during the podcast. It's amazing for us to think that we're speaking to the world out there. And uh, and I know, you know, I've personally had a lot of people thanking me for doing these. And, well, we're very grateful to have the opportunity oh, yeah. to do it. Yeah, so. absolutely. And uh, thank you. I want to thank Neil. And, you know, this is the first time since we started, so it's podcast 20, number 21, and it kept coming to me in my head, so I'm going to speak it out. You know, those of you who find the podcast useful, let other people know, you know, if you're in a parent group and so on, because we're doing it just to get the knowledge out to change how people understand and, as a result, interact with children in general, with each other, but with children, and especially with children with, uh, you know, exceptional challenges. And we also, I want to tell everybody that in a few days we're going to Canada and we're going to bring ABM to two schools from four years old up to eight or 11. I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, so wish us good luck. It's a big, big undertaking and we're very excited. So once more, thank you and see you next time. Yeah. Thank you for joining us on Neuro Movement Revolution with Anab Benyel. You will find all of our podcasts and additional resources on our website at www.anabbenyelmethod.com. You can also subscribe to this podcast for free on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and tune in. We look forward to seeing you online for our next Neuro Movement Revolution.